don't touch that dial, the night is gone. The morning's here. It's a beautiful day in Chicago, and this is Chuck Shaden inviting you to spend a part of it with us in the hall closet. The sounds of good old radio entertainment brought to you by Northwest Federal Saving. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. Good morning, Mom, and hello out there in Radio Land. This is Chuck Shaden in the hall closet for Tuesday morning, October 26, 1976, from our Nostalgia Broadcast Center on Chicago's northwest side. We have a closet filled with lots of goodies for you today. We have Henry Morgan, Arnold Stang, Freeman Gosden, Charles Corral, Captain Midnight, Groucho Marx, and uh, Homer and Jethro. <laughs> the first verse it's gotta get better it can't get no worse so loan us your ears for a minute or two and we'll give them right back just as soon as we're through singing so long it's been good to know you so long it's been good to know you so Jethro, and uh, so long, it's been good to know you. Good morning, it's nice to know you, and nice to have you with us this morning. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. It's four minutes past seven o'clock. Weatherman says cloudy and cool today. Some light scattered showers this morning. High today will be in the middle 40s. Tonight, mostly cloudy, colder with a low in the low or mid 30s. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, it'll be partly sunny, continued cool, again with a high in the mid 40s. It's 37 degrees at O'Hare, 38 at Midway, 44 along the lake shore. Humidity is 79% wind out of the northwest at 9 miles an hour. Over the weekend, we got some great books in uh, at our Metro Golden Memory Shop. A book that I have, two books actually, that I have been searching for uh, since we opened our shop in, uh, in March. Uh, Pictorial History of Radio and the Pictorial History of Television. These are two very good books, and they are uh, uh, really pretty complete as far as the photos are concerned. A lot of lots of pictures of uh, 
of uh, the early radio days, all of the radio days through the 40s. The, the pictorial history of radio is mostly complete uh, because the radio kind of ended, you know. I mean, there's no disc jockeys or anything like that in, in there. So you see the golden age of radio comes to life in this book. And then, of course, the pictorial history of television is the beginning years of TV and lots of, uh, lots of good uh, pages of photos and uh, some documentary there, story about the, uh, the history of radio and television. Finally found them so that we could offer them to you for sale at our Metro Golden Memory Shop. I uh, want to come and take a look. This is, um, I don't mean to rush the season, but boy, if there's someone in your house who is, uh, is really turned on to all of these old-time radio shows, won't this be a great Christmas gift? Huh? A surprise Christmas gift for him, too? That's a good idea. And if you buy one and you get it for him and then he buys it himself, you can hit him over the head with it and then uh, return it to us. What the heck? Doesn't that drive you nuts? All year long you're looking for something to get somebody... And then a week before Christmas, they go out and buy it themselves, huh? <laughs> We're all guilty of that, too. Well, uh, we've got these books at the MGM shop. All other books, too, about the... We, we have a very, very large selection. I would say we probably have the largest selection of nostalgia books about uh, Hollywood and uh, show business outside of Hollywood and show business. A couple of stores in the Hollywood, Larry Edmonds Books Shop and... Uh, uh, Pickwick books have very large selections of these things, but I don't know of anybody in Chicago that has such a large selection. And mostly, our books are offered at special MGM shop prices. So it will pay you to pop over to the shop. Uh, we're open uh, Monday, or rather we're closed Monday. We're open Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday until 8, and from 1 to 5 every Sunday afternoon. We're at 5120 West Irving Park Road in Chicago, and we have a fabulous collection of books about, about the good guys and the good days, you know? Books about Tracy and Hepburn and uh, Burton and Bogart and uh, Ozzie Nelson and uh, Gable. Books about Jane Mansfield and Marilyn Monroe. Books about uh, crime movies and the great musicals books about the rise and fall of the matinee idol, about the great movie serials, the cliffhangers. Boy, do we have books at our Metro Golden Memory Shop. Come on in and browse. Spend a, spend a couple of decades there some afternoon or evening. You'll have a good time. 5120 West Irving Park Road, uh, just uh, two and a half blocks west of Northwest Federal Savings, right across the street from Nelson Hershberg Ford. <laughs> Groucho Marx, believe it or not, little thing he recorded back in 1932. So he even had the duck with him then, huh? Say the secret word. Everybody says, I love you. Well, we never said Groucho had a great voice for singing. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. 
Ten minutes past seven o'clock. What are you doing Saturday afternoon, huh? Hey, have we got an afternoon for you on our Those Were the Days program this Saturday, the 30th of October, just down the dial on WNIB, that's at FM 97, from one o'clock until five o'clock, we're going to spend Halloween with Arch Obler. Now, if you uh, are at all into radio, you know that Arch Obler was the guy who put together so much mystery and suspense and excitement on the old Lights Out radio shows. A uh, first-class radio writer, though he says he's just a writer, he is um, an amazing man who has the ability to take you from today and put you into the realm of adventure and excitement. And we're going to have a whole afternoon with Arch Obler. We're going to have a 1939 Arch Obler play called The Voice Within Me. And then from uh, the 1940s, The House is Haunted, another 1945 show called Holiday 1940X, and the Lights Out drama called Money, Money, Money. Our special guest Saturday afternoon will be Arch Obler, who will discuss his career and reminisce about radio's golden age. And throughout the afternoon, we're going to present sounds from his Capitol recording, Drop Dead, an exercise in horror. And we will present that fabulous story, The Dark. That's the one where, where bodies are turned inside out. You've heard that once or twice, huh? And The Chicken Heart, the classic chicken heart story by Arch Obler. Bum, 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 bum. You know, the heart that's beating and multiplying. Oh, we're going to have a great, a great Saturday afternoon. Halloween with Arch Obler. Hope you can join us from 1 until 5 down the dial on WNIB. Your dial right now is set to 106 FM, WXFM. And if you would like to know what we broadcast in the mornings here on WXFM, the schedule of shows that we present, old-time shows, and as well as our Saturday afternoon schedule and our Thursday night broadcast on WBEZ, then you should be a subscriber to our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide because the newsletter contains the complete schedule of all the old-time shows that we broadcast throughout the week on these radio stations. In addition to that, we have articles and photographs from and about the past. 32 pages of fun and memories. Uh, a year's subscription to our Nostalgia Guide is now only $7.00 and you will get your money's worth, we think, in good reading and good information. Charlie McCarthy in a football uniform is on the cover of our Nostalgia Newsletter for November. Edgar Bergen in an overcoat, too. <laughs> You'll like it. Why don't you subscribe now? Call us at 545-2260. That's 545-2260. Just give us your name and address. Your subscription will begin with the November issue, which will get to you. If you call us today, we'll be sure to get it to you by the end of this month, and uh, we'll send an invoice uh, for the one-year subscription along with that first issue, $7, 545-2260. Give us a call now, or if you're uh, in a hustle bustle this morning, then uh, jot the number down and give us a buzz a little later on when it's a little bit more convenient for you, 545 2260 5452260 or send $7 to Nostalgia Newsletter Box 421 Morton Grove 60053. November Newsletter has articles about Jack Benny, Martin and Lewis, Cary Grant, George Raff, Bill Stern, RKO Radio Pictures, Singing Radio Commercials, Chicago Surface Lines, Larry Clinton and the Orchestra. We have our Dime Store Classified ad page, Memory Club movie listings, all kinds of good stuff. So become a subscriber now. You may not be the first on your block, but you surely will keep up with the, the other guys and gals on the block when you have your nostalgia newsletter. 545-2260. Now, for some more good old radio, for, for the first of our good old radio features this morning, we go back to February 5th of 1947 for the, um, the Henry Morgan Show. Show? Eversharp, manufacturers of Eversharp shake injector razors and blades, brings you the Henry Morgan Show, featuring Bernie Green and his orchestra and a few surprises. <laughs> Good evening, anybody. Here's Morgan.
Thank you very much. A lot of people have asked how we make up jokes for this program, and uh, a lot of people have asked why we don't. <laughs> of course, humor today is big business, and it can't be run in a slipshod way like housing or California divorces. It takes a lot of planning. Now, many people think that jokes are made up on the spur of the moment right after some story breaks in the newspapers, and that's not so. The joke is written first. <laughs> well, that's true. After it's made up, the joke is put in the icebox so it won't rot and uh, is brought out at the proper time. Of course, sometimes you reach in for a joke and come out with an egg. <laughs> Let me show you how this happens. A couple of months ago, oh, long ago, we were talking about this program, and one of the actors said... Hey, Henry, I got a great topical joke. What's the joke, Brewster? Well... We wait until Oregon has two governors at the same time, see? And then you say to wait me... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How could Oregon have two governors? How do I know how? I just say it might happen, and where will you be then? Well, I have a lot of eyebrow jokes ready. You mean in... Yeah, in case of a cold strike. Yeah. Oh, I'm all set. <laughs> but I think you ought to forget that two governors business. That's impossible. Impossible? That's what you said about the ballpoint pen. Yeah. So what happens? Yeah. So they invent the ballpoint pen, so Fred Allen has a new one to order joke every week, and you don't even have one damp joke. <laughs> well, I had a joke about a typewriter that writes under wood. That's not the point. You didn't wait for that O. Oh. Look, I had a joke about, uh, let's see, there was one about a pen with a matzo ball point that would write under chicken soup. Hey, Mike, Troy. Yeah? Remember I told him back in 44 that Truman would be elected vice president and he played the piano? Yeah, and Morgan didn't believe it. Henry Wallace, he kept saying, making up Henry Wallace jokes that we finally had to load in boxcars and sell cheap to Westbrook Pegler. Yeah. yeah. Let's make up some football fix jokes, I kept saying. Come on, let's all make up some football fix jokes. And what's he say? He says he wants to make up jokes about the eternal bachelor. He'll always be a bachelor, Morgan says. So 50 jokes he makes up about Leo DeRocha. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We may still be able to use them. <laughs> That's pretty well, subtle, six jokes, I, I told him. I should have made that a Lorraine Day joke. I could have done a lot better. Well, I told him about basketball fix, football fix, price fight fix jokes, I told him. All this week, I've been telling him smog jokes, smog jokes. Fellas, what do we want with smog jokes? Suppose they move the program to California. Yeah, I guess if I had some smog jokes ready, they'd call me a pretty smog operator. <laughs> Well, now, how about this two governors of Oregon business before it's too late? Well, if you think it could happen in this country... I, I... just got a feeling, that's all. Go ahead. So, I made up 37 jokes about Oregon's having two governors, and you know what happened. Georgia has two governors, and every other program has a joke ready. Not us. I even had some set up for the Carolinas. Like, uh... Did you hear what the two governors of North Carolina said to the two governors of South Carolina? Stuff like that. I had a lot of it. The reason I'm telling you all this is about two months ago, I made the worst mistake of my life. I really guessed wrong. You see, Brewster came up to me and he said... Hey, Henry, I got a great idea for a joke. Look, suppose somebody writes a song called Open a Door, Rich. That's impossible. <laughs> Now, in answer to many requests that we might get, here is, or here are, the Elm City Four. Here is, here are. Here is the Elm City Four singing Under the Bamboo Tree. If you like me like I like you and we like them both the same, I like to say this very day, I like to change your name. Cause I love you and love you too, and if you will love me, 
One lives two, two lives with one under the bamboo tree. Down in the jungle lived a maid of royal blood, though dusky shade. A marked impression once she made upon a Zulu from Atabulu. And every morning he would be down underneath a bamboo tree, awaiting there his love to see. And then to her he'd sing, if you like a me like I like a you, and we like a both the same. I like to say this very day, I like to change your name, cause I love you and love you too, and if you will love me, one lives two, two lives one, under the bamboo tree, if you like me, like I like you, and we like both the same, I like to say this very day, I like to change your name, cause I love you and love you too, and if you will love me, one lives two, two lives Tonight, the Eversharp Company, manufacturer of Eversharp chicken injector razors and blades, have kindly consented to reduce the length of the commercial announcements by between one and two seconds. <laughs> Eversharp likes to explain the way the razor works by having people go around saying, push, pull, click, click. But I think it would be more effective if you could actually hear this handy little gadget. So tonight, we're going to make the sounds for you. The Eversharp chicken injector razor, of course, changes blades automatically. You take the razor in one hand, the injector cartridge in the other, and then just push. <laughs> then you just pull. Then just click, click. <laughs> Works very simply. And you get the razor and 20 blades for a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> and the sponsor always thanks me for the commercial announcement. And that's the Henry Morgan Show, part one of the broadcast from uh, February 5th of 1947. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM. Are you riding the plains looking for a faithful companion to help finance that new home of yours? Then ride north and west to Northwest Federal Savings, where resourceful people are waiting to serve you with professional advice and competitive home financing. When you've found the home you want, just give a call to Northwest Federal. An appraiser will inspect the property, and you'll have a mortgage loan commitment within 48 hours, at no obligation. Northwest Federal is Northwest Chicagoland's leader in conventional home financing. Visit, write, or call Northwest Federal Savings and ask for me. I wonder who that stranger was. Him? He was the lone arranger. We've got silver to cast away! Northwest Federal Savings, lending silver away 63 hours a week in Chicago, Edison Park, Des Plaines, Norridge, and Arlington Heights. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM, 23 minutes past 7 o'clock, 38 degrees officially, 44 along the lakefront. 41 is the year of our movie coming up this Saturday evening in the Memory Club in the community room at Northwest Federal Savings. Right. The film is called Manpower. 1941 picture starring Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, George Raft, Eve Arden, Frank McHugh, Walter Catlett, and Alan Hale. It's uh, an exciting, uh, rip-roaring adventure about the hazards faced by the men who risk their lives daily repairing high-tension lines. I think you'll like this picture. The sparks really fly when, uh, when Raft and Robinson want Dietrich. Uh-huh. They were only two of the many, right? <laughs> Manpower is our movie this Saturday. Doors open at 7.30. Film begins at 8 o'clock. Dues are a dollar and a quarter a meeting, payable at the door. Hope you can come. I think you will enjoy Manpower. It's a good film. We'll be there. Hope to see you uh, for this good old movie in the Memory Club this Saturday, the 30th of October. 
Now let's get back to uh, the next segment of the Henry Morgan Show. For a long time... <laughs> for a long time I've been thinking about getting an insurance policy. Not so much that I've been thinking about it, but I know an insurance agent and he's been thinking about it. This is the way it happened. A couple of weeks ago, as I came out of the studio after broadcast, I met this agent who'd been in the audience, and I said, Hello, Harvey. I see you just came out of the show. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, how'd you like it? Uh, very good. Thanks. <laughs> Henry. Yes? You need insurance. <laughs> I'm your friend. Don't let another program... I mean, another week go by. I shouldn't, huh? Listen, face the facts. Do you know how many ways there are to die? Your company sells them? <laughs> Why, Henry, there's death by strangulation, death by asphyxiation, death by accidental shooting, death by on-purpose shooting, death by hanging, death by poisoning, and, if you'll pardon the expression, you could drop dead. <laughs> Well, that's probably just for poor people. There's death from floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, death by falling from heights, death by heights falling on you. No wonder anybody's alive. There's death from sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, acetic acid, acid stomach, acid indigestion, and acid. I never touch this stuff myself. Well, Henry, you can't be lucky forever. Yes, I see. And it's not only you. Something could happen to your wife. Something could happen to your wife's mother. How much does that cost? <laughs> anyway, after he got through talking, I didn't feel too well. And who was I to fight the insurance trust? But I couldn't get the policy until I'd seen the insurance company doctor. Well, 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 Mr. Gorgon. Uh, uh, what are you here for? Uh, Morgan, and I'm interested in a 20-year endowment policy. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, take off your clothes. Well, okay. Uh, uh, now put them back on. Well, aren't you going to examine me? Oh, no, I just wanted to see you tie that bow tie. Oh, I see. Now, let me see, let me see. I ought to ask you something, something. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you suffer from headaches? Yes. You too? Oh, my headaches are killing me. My, my back's been bothering me for years. Every spring and every fall, I get the grip and, and, and my foot hurts. I, I wish I knew a good doctor. Now, tell me, Mr. Organ. Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, tell me, Mr. Gordon, uh, do you have any trouble with your internal Morgans? <laughs> Just in the gas pipes. Oh, yes, in the gas pipes. Well, now, let's see. You ought to do something else. Uh, what, what? Oh, uh, uh, stick your tongue out. Like this? Oh, my, 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 my. What is wrong with your tongue? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing wrong with my tongue. Well, then, uh, uh, why do you talk so funny? They caught my tongue's out. Has <laughs> got. Uh, yes. Can I throw it back in now? Well, all right, but the way you talk, I'm I'm sure you're not normal. Uh, am I am I through now? Oh no, oh my no, no. They they make me give you a blood test. And, uh, they make you. Don't you want to? Oh no, the sight of blood makes me faint. Never mind, doctor. My blood was tested. Well, how did it make out? It failed in spelling. <laughs> Am I through now, Doctor? Well, just one or two questions. <laughs> Do you have an involuntary thrombosis or a deviated septum? Gosh, no, I can't afford things like that. <laughs> I'll give you a break. I'll put down yes. Do you have a nervous disorder? I'm getting one. Oh, that's good. Do you have neuritis, arthritis, sciatica, lumbago, or gout? Choose one. <laughs> I finally passed and went back to the insurance agent to get my policy, and he said... Well, Henry, tell you what kind of policy I'd like to see you have. That 20 payment life. What's that? After 20 payments, you get a year's subscription to life. <laughs> well, let me look at the policy, will you? Oh, say, this looks pretty good. 
Here in uh, paragraph 34, section 91, it says, uh, I get $10,000 in case of snow blindness, <laughs> provided I live in Miami. <laughs> That's pretty good. Section 81 says, I'm guaranteed against harpooning while in swimming. <laughs> happens every day. <laughs> says here, if the George Washington Bridge caves in while I'm on it, the company repairs my car. <laughs> nice. A big comfort. I see, though, I'm not covered in case of baldness. Who is? Yes, uh-huh. But I hope you notice paragraph 91. You get a $50 bonus for triplets after the third set. <laughs> Graham. Say, uh, tell me something. What happens if I get in an accident? You may get killed. <laughs> well, what happens if I get sick? We pay you $100 a week for six weeks. Well, what if I get out of bed before the six weeks? Why should you? <laughs> we all set I like them. that. <laughs> That's pretty good. We're all set now, Morgan. <laughs> Who's your second beneficiary? <laughs> what did you say, sir? <laughs> We're all set now. Who is your second beneficiary? My second beneficiary? Who's my first beneficiary? The president of our company. <laughs> You'll be crazy about him. He sounds delightful. I'd be glad to leave my money to him. Most wonderful of all, Henry. The death benefit of this policy pays so much money that you'll be able to retire for the rest of your life. I'll take it. Hello. Hello, Hortense. This is Gerard. Hello, Gerard. This is Hortense. Hey, what are you doing tonight, Hortense, honey? Don't, Hortense, honey me. I'm mad on you. What? What did I do? You don't even know what you did? No. That even makes it worse. What did I do? What did I do? Hey, wait. You mean because I called your father a stingy old sourpuss? Well, that was nothing. It's only a figure of speech. <laughs> that is not the reason. But I didn't know you called my father a stingy old sourpuss. Hey, what are you picking on me for, Hortense? Everybody says so. Even your own mother oh, says... Oh, Gerard. Now I begin to see you for what you are. You know what? You're dangerous. <laughs> But wait, if you're not mad about that, for heaven's sakes, what are you mad at me for? You know. I know, I know. Ha, ha, ha. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I never want to talk to you again. Goodbye. Me neither. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Hortense. This is Gerard. Who? Gerard. What do you mean, who? Oh, Gerard. Hello, Gerard. Well? Well? What are you mad at me for? Well, it's because what you did to me. What did I do? What did I do, for goodness sakes? You apologize? Yes. What for? <laughs> Remember when we went skating on Monday? Yeah. And I tripped over someone and took that terrible flop. Yeah, yeah. You didn't even pick me up. Well, gee whiz, Hortense, who do you think you tripped over? <laughs> oh, was that you, Gerard? Oh, I didn't know. But anyway, I'm still mad. What for? When that crowd gathered and the doctor came, you didn't even have the decency to take me home. Well, for goodness sakes, Hortense, who do you think the doctor was examining? <laughs> oh! Oh, my apologies, Gerard. Do you feel better? Oh, much better. That's good. Why don't you come over tonight and we'll sit in my parlor? I'm still not allowed to sit. <laughs> That's 
too bad. Anyways, we're not mad on each other anymore. I wasn't mad on you, Hortense. You were mad on me. Well, you didn't even bother to explain. What is there to explain? You fell on me. At least you could have called me up. I did call you up just now. You were mad on me. Well, what did you have to scream for? Can't you talk like a human being? Look who's talking about who's a human being. She hollers, she yells, she tortures me. Oh, shut up. Hortense. I don't ever want to talk to you again. Is that understood? Ah, uh, yes, we guess. And that's the Henry Morgan Show, part two, uh, broadcast from February 5th of 1947. Arnold Stang, Florence Hallop is the, uh, the gal who plays uh, Hortense on this show. We met her in... Uh, this last trip out to California this summer, and uh, we had a chance to talk with her about her very interesting career, and we'll be sharing that uh, conversation with you sometime soon on a Saturday afternoon, I think, on our Those Were the Days program. This is our Hall Closet, Chuck Shaden with you in the mornings, every morning, Monday through Friday, from 7 until 9, with all the good old radio shows, 25 minutes before uh, 8 o'clock. Well, let's see, the continuing saga of Shaden and the Betamax video tape recorder. Last night on our Betamax that we got from Townhouse TV and Appliances, wanted to tape the uh, Amelia Earhart special. It was a three-hour show, three-hour show, and uh, wasn't going to be able to watch it, so set it up to tape it. And um, when I got through checking it out, I realized that there was a human error involved in the taping of that show. Not the Betamax's error, but Shaden's error. I was taping Channel 7 and the show was on Channel 5. When I checked the tape, there was a football game on in the middle of it. And, uh, I mean, it was a football game was on, and I just made a mistake, a boo-boo, so I blew it. I didn't watch the Amelia Earhart special. I was going to sit back and watch, take a nice slice of three hours out some terrible Sunday afternoon, you know, weather-wise or whatever, and um, I blew it, didn't get it. But that's my fault, not the fault of the Betamax. The football game came out sensational on there, and, uh, but if you want to watch a football game, you know, that's another idea. Uh, if somebody in your house got to watch football and you want to watch something else, uh, many folks have a couple of television sets. And if you've got a Betamax hooked up to one of them, you know, you can always just tape something else some other night. And then, uh, while one person is watching a football game or anything really, and you can just watch the other thing that you've had, uh, taped. Many, many uses for the Betamax videotape recorder. And discover them all when you visit Townhouse TV and Appliances, 7243 Tui Avenue, just west of Harlem. They'll be pleased to demonstrate the Sony to you, show you how it works, and you'll be really pleased, I think. See it at Townhouse. They're open Monday, Thursday, and Friday nights till 9, Saturday until 5. <laughs> See the brand new Fords for 1977 at Nelson Hirschberg Ford, 5133 West Irving Park Road at Laramie. See all the 77 Better Idea cars you've been waiting for. And see them all at one of Chicagoland's leading Ford dealers, open seven days a week at Irving Park and Laramie. Nelson Hirschberg Ford. Now, we'll go back to the last portion of the Henry Morgan Show. Strange Men of History. In the year 1821, a 19-year-old immigrant boy came to this country from Slovenia. He arrived with only 13 Zagrebs in his pocket, which was equal to about 65 shillings in English money. But he was in the United States. He was about a buck and a half. He had no friends, no relatives, couldn't speak a word of English. And yet... In 25 short years, he was completely broke. <laughs> Aside from the fact that no picture of him remains, nothing is known about him at all. <laughs> about the only thing we do know for sure is that he never even suspected 
that someday Bernie Green and his orchestra would play a peachy arrangement of the peanut vendor. <laughs> familiar with the fiery pep talks which football coaches give their teams between halves. Now, we thought it might be interesting to listen to an English rugby coach pleading with his team to die for dear old Watsis. So we take you now to a stadium just outside London, England, for the annual game between Thoreau and Marrow. It's halftime, and in the Thoreau dressing room, Coach Thrustlewaite Morgan is screaming his team up to a fighting pitch. Gentlemen... <laughs> I don't know quite how to tell you this. <laughs> but the score isn't particularly invigorating. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's a shade disheartening. <laughs> 85 to 3. <laughs> I mean, after all, we're not ahead. <laughs> Feels to me our showing isn't too strong. <laughs> Ought to win one, you know. I owe it to Alma Mater, blood, sweat, all that sort of rot, you know. I... Bravo! Oh, well. <laughs> I thank you so much. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, lad. Uh, now then, you, uh, where's your thumb? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. It's on the playing field. <laughs> then I suggest you jolly well trot right out and retrieve it. No excuse for untidiness, you know. <laughs> My maternal grandmother. A bit before your time, of course. One of the least tidy women in Lancashire. I make no brief for her, none at all. Now then, Jeps, I checked the records of the visiting team. Nothing formidable, actually. Uh, they're right forward, Greg. No breeding. <laughs> Father's in trade, I believe. Doesn't hold a snivet to our lad Wheatley here. Rather! <laughs> and who? You, Godalski, we're counting on you for brawn, old boy. Get your head into it, won't you? Dislike putting you lads on the griddle like this, but this sort of showing just won't pass muster. Reminds me, elderly gentleman dining at the club yesterday asked me to pass the muster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, what say, lads? Mustn't look so futile out there. Rather! <laughs> or to score at least one before the fog lifts. Oh. Now then, here's how we do it. Here. Yeah. Rather expected to rather. <laughs> now, Priestley, next time you get possession, you're to kick to Priestley 
Now, uh, you kick to Beastly, then Beastly. You also kick to Priestly, or I mean to say Priestly. Uh, tell you what, uh, suppose we do it alphabetically. <laughs> Beastly, you kick to Priestly. Priestly, you kick to Beastly. And you, Beastly, you, Beastly. However did you come to such an atrocious muffler as you're wearing? <laughs> Very poor taste. What sort of impression can this team hope to make if our left wing dresses like a member of the House of Commons? <laughs> Priestly, don't kick the ball to Priestly. He doesn't deserve it. <laughs> kick it to someone worthy. Our oh, time's up, right? There's the whistle. Now then, let's cut out there and give those cripple snappers from Marrow a taste of what for. Oh, 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 uh, what? Wrong dressing room, you say? This is Marrow? Wrong? Well, no matter. No harm done. Carry on, lads. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world's greatest announcer, Ted Husing, and the world's worst commercial, the shave aside. Thank you very much for those kind words, Henry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again tonight, we bring you the world famous ever sharp six shave a the most daring demonstration ever conducted by any razor. Right before this microphone, in full view of our studio audience, we will now conduct another actual shaving contest, which proves week after week that ever sharp chick injector razor gives the world's quickest, easiest, cleanest shave. Last week, an ever sharp chick user whisked in the winner in the sizzling time of 20 seconds. Tonight, we have six more contestants picked at random from the studio audience, three men from New York, one from California, Ohio, and Canada. Now, three of these men are going to shave with the Evershop Chick Injector Razors. Three are going to use other well-known safety razors. Who's going to win tonight's big shave -a Well, here the contestants are now, out on the stage. They're all lathered up, they're at the post, they're waiting for the signal, and here it is. And now they're off, and again, tonight's big shave -a is on. These six shavers up here tonight on the stage are now getting their razors ready. Say... Look at those men with the ever-sharp shick. One after another, they're already out in front because with the automatic blade changer, there's no blade to unwrap. All you do is pull, push, click, click, and there's a blade all ready to shave you. Fast, you said it. Smooth right again. Easy, famous for it to romp with this razor. Who's that fellow out there in front? An ever-sharp shick using naturally. He's half shaved already. And that's a wonderful close, clean shave he's getting. In gentle strokes, the one side of his face is as thick as a billiard ball. And there goes the bell. And here again is tonight's winner. Once again, it's an ever sharp chick user. And uh, since Charlie Irving isn't here, I'll tell you who it is myself. It is Mr. Gregory, and the time is 25 seconds. Well, congratulations, Mr. Gregory. Now you have actual proof, ladies and gentlemen, that with an ever sharp chick, you not only shave faster and easier, but your face feels smoother and more comfortable. You can feel the difference, you bet. No sting, no pull. Yes, folks, for the world's quickest, easiest, cleanest shave, use an ever sharp chick injector razor. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> People. Oh, that's your line, Charlie. <laughs> well, people are asking more questions today than ever before. I like this. And they're getting fewer answers. In an effort to alleviate this shortage of answers, we bring you the man who knows everything, the question man. And here he is, the question man. Good evening. Our first question, sir, comes from Mrs. F.S. of Overland, Ohio, who asks, should olives be eaten with the fingers? No. The fingers should be eaten separately. <laughs> question comes from Mrs. J.E. of Nantasket, who inquires, how do you prepare chestnut stuffing? Send for my free booklet entitled, How to Stuff a Chestnut. <laughs> Nearly enclosed $2 to cover cost of covering costs. A bachelor of Louisville, Kentucky writes, I often hear people say, two can live as cheap as one. What does this mean? Nothing. <laughs> and Miss J.L. of Cincinnati wants to know, who wrote the tale of two cities? I'm afraid Miss J.L. will have to be more specific. Which two cities? <laughs> Our next question comes from Miss J.K. of Utica, New York. She asks, what does the expression habeas corpus refer to? Now, this refers to an old Latin expression. <laughs> Our next question comes from Mr. C.M. of Medfield, Mass., who writes, is it true that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is always equal to two right angles? No. <laughs> Speaker Hooper and Lewis comprised the Boston outfield at that time. <laughs> the first baseman to whom you refer was undoubtedly George Sisler. <laughs> and our last question, sir, comes from Mrs. L.T. of Salt Lake City, who says, My husband claims he can determine a horse's age by examining his teeth. <laughs> 
Is this true? No. Your husband should examine the horse's teeth. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That was the question, man. Brought to you every so often as a public service. <laughs> Manufacturers of Eversharp Chick Injector Razors and Blades invite you to tune in same time, same station next week when Eversharp will again bring you the Henry Morgan Show. <laughs> They're yours again. Eversharp Chick Injector Blades for the world's fastest, safest, smoothest shave. Just insert the automatic blade changer in your Eversharp Chick Injector Razor. Push, pull, click, click, and you're ready to shave. 20 blades, 75 cents at good stores everywhere. This is Charles Irving saying good night for Eversharp. Anytime. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Well, they had to get out of there in a hurry, didn't they? Just made it, too. That's the, the uh, Henry Morgan Show from February 5th of 1947. Somehow it just doesn't seem like a show can end without those chimes, huh? Of course, there were no chimes on uh, ABC, and even CBS, uh, well, NBC was the only one with chimes, but uh, very often there would be music following uh, the signature on uh, the ABC and uh, CBS shows. But that's the way it was. Henry Morgan, February 5th of 1947. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on October 26th of 1976, about 29 years after the fact there. And... Uh, we have all the good old shows for you every day, Monday through Friday, from 7 until 9, right here in our hall closet. Cloudy and cool today. Some light scattered showers this morning, but they'll ending by noontime. Maybe they're even gone now. They'll seem to be raining around uh, our Nostalgia Broadcast Center. 44 degrees presently along the lakefront. 38 officially at midway, midway 37 at O'Hare. It's 10 minutes before 8 o'clock. I have a sound for you here from our cassette tape of the month for October. Listen to this scene from the Weird Circle broadcast of Frankenstein. As a humanitarian, I feel it my Christian duty to do this now. Put that knife down, Professor. No, I can't let... Ooh! Oh, he's got me in the clutch of his hand. Command him to stop this. Stop fighting him, Professor. He's frightened. He has the same reactions as a child. Grabs and won't let loose. Let me go, monster. Stop! Don't go out that door. Put the professor down! Don't go out that door! Frankenstein, the monster lives on our cassette tape of the month for October. It's uh, one of a pair of chillers for this spooky month. Two good shows on our tape. Vincent Price starring in a Hollywood Star Time production of the classic Jack the Ripper story, The Lodger, plus a great radio adaptation of the classic monster story, Frankenstein. These two shows are yours on our cassette tape for October. Only $5 from the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Frankenstein, The Lodger, a pair of creepy creepers. Our October cassette tape, $5 from the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Or uh, pick it up at any office of Northwest Federal Savings. Now, also this month, we offer a Halloween special. It's the most famous radio broadcast of all time. It's Orson Welles' 1938 panic broadcast, The War of the Worlds. It's a full hour of amazing listening, and it's available this month only for only $5. From the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. If you'd like The War of the Worlds plus our regular October tape with Frankenstein and the Lodger, Simply send $10 to the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Or get both tapes at Northwest Federal Savings or at our Metro Golden Memory Shop over at 5120 West Irving Park Road. But by mail, simply send to the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. <laughs>
That's Wayne Newton and uh, Vida saying, uh, Vida saying, I was you there. <laughs> Chuck Shaden here in the whole closet. Five minutes before eight o'clock. Uh, remember Jesse Crawford at the organ and sing alongs with the bouncing ball and, the, and those chases on the silent screen? Oh man, those were the days. Well, if you don't remember those days, you can relive some of those moments uh, when. Uh, you come to the Chicago Theater on Thursday evening, November 4th at 8 o'clock p.m. Cato, the Chicago area theater organ enthusiast, presents A Night of Nostalgia. Those were the days at the Chicago Theater. Walter Stroni will be at the console of the Chicago's mighty Wurlitzer organ, accompanying a silent film, playing organ solos, and making music for a great sing-along session. We will be there, too, as your guide on a journey down memory lane recalling the golden age of radio, the uh, golden age of Chicago movie houses, and lots of nostalgic things about the Chicago and the past. A Night of Nostalgia at the Chicago Theater, Thursday, November 4th. Advance sale tickets are $3.50 each by mail, and you can send to Cato, C-A-T-O-E, 6244 West Eddy Street in Chicago at 60634. Or you can get your tickets at the Chicago Theater box office or at the MGM shop at 5120 West Irving Park Road. If you want more information, call Cato at 282-0037. Or don't uh, hesitate to give us a buzz. We'll be happy to give you all the details. A night of nostalgia, a great evening. We're going to be there. I can hardly wait to be on the stage at the Chicago Theater. Wow, that's going to be something, I'll tell you that. Thursday, November 4th, and I hope that... Uh, that you will be in the audience that night. Wouldn't that be great? You say that you're in love with me. Did you sleep well last night? If you slept well last night, you're not in love with me. You think that you're in love with me. Did you eat well tonight? If you ate well tonight, you're not in love with me. Before you give your heart to me, prepare to be in misery, in misery, but ecstasy, be cold. If it isn't pain, then it isn't love. If it doesn't drive you insane, it can be love. If it's not a flame, burning night and day, then it's nothing more than a game. Children can play. I'm not that way. My heart never was taken. Love and take it, but beware. My heart never was broken. If you break it, <laughs> I don't care. If 
Clark Gable's uh, friend, uh, Carol Lombard, and uh, Then It Isn't Love, something she recorded back in 1937. Chuck Shaden here, 1976, in the hall closet. Here's some logic from Imperial Leasing in Des Plaines. When you buy our cassette tape of the month for $5, you get an hour's worth of really great radio entertainment. When you lease the cassette tape from Imperial for $225, you get an hour's worth of really great radio entertainment, plus a 1977 Eldorado. Oh, equipped with an AM and FM stereo radio cassette player. That's right, you can lease our cassette tape of the month from Imperial Leasing at 900 East Rand Road in Des Plaines and get our tape of the month on wheels. Your friends will ooh and ah when they see your brand new tape of the month and they'll like your new Eldorado too. Be the first in your block to lease our cassette tape of the month. Get a quality AM and FM stereo cassette player and the 1977 Eldorado all for just $225 a month. Call 298-0011, Imperial Leasing, and ask them if the Eldorado travels at uh, three and three quarters or seven and a half. Now you can get your whole house magic is clean and also get a helping hand with the laundry. Hi, this is Carmelita Pope with good news. Right now, with any magic is order, you'll get a bottle of Ego Liquid, the heavy-duty one-step laundry detergent at no extra charge. With Ego, there's no need for pre-soaks and sprays. Of course, Magicist is the recognized expert when it comes to cleaning. So, have Magicist clean your carpeting and furniture in home or office. Or have Magicist call for, clean, and deliver your rugs and draperies. Save 20% for cash and carry. Bank cards are welcome. And Magicist sells rugs, too. Come clean now and get your quart bottle of Ego heavy-duty liquid laundry detergent at no extra charge. Chicago phones 378-8600. Suburbs see the white pages. Ask Magicist about soil retardant. It's only three cents a square foot. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet, a quick trip downtown, then we'll be back with Amos and Andy and Captain Midnight. So stick around and don't touch that dial. This is WXFM, Elmwood Park in Chicago, broadcasting from Sears Tower at 106 on FM. It's a minute after 8 o'clock. American School of Beauty Culture at 1127 Lake Street in Oak Park says traffic laws are simply rules of common sense and courtesy. Let's please obey them for safety's sake. This message was brought to you by American School of Beauty Culture. They are the complete beauty college trained instructors, practice areas, the latest equipment on which to learn, too. You'll graduate as a certified beautician. Federal grants and loans are available. For details on registration, you can give them a telephone call. Just dial 848-9580. 848-9580, American School of Beauty Culture, with locations in Des Plaines and Oak Park. Bluers Incorporated at 16940 Westview, South Holland, says reckless drivers don't call all, cause all of the traffic accidents. Many mishaps are caused by the average driver making one small mistake. To be really safe, be better than average and don't make any mistakes. A small one could be your last. The safety reminder brought to you by Blowers Incorporated, manufacturers of exhaust blowers, always at prices you can afford. For service, call 596-4220 for Blowers Incorporated at 16940. That's Westview, South Holland, where they're always working to make the community safe. If you're a contractor, builder, or one of the vast general public and you're looking for the best source of supply for any item of lumber, millwork, insulation, wall paneling, roofing materials, or oak, maple, and fir flooring, you want to buy the highest quality at the lowest possible prices. You want a wide selection from which to choose, and you want courteous service and prompt delivery. Miller Brothers Lumber Company, one of Chicago's leading lumber companies since 1928, is the place. Find out for yourself. The next time you're in need of lumber products or other building materials, visit them. Miller Brothers Lumber Yard and Warehouse, 4918 West Lawrence Avenue. For Prom City and suburban delivery, 
Telephone Avenue 33460. Miller Brothers Lumber Company, 4918 West Lawrence Avenue. Telephone Avenue 33460. In stereo at 106 from high atop Sears Tower, this is WXFM, Elmwood Park, Chicago. Chuck Shaden back in the hall closet on a nice uh, Monday, rather Tuesday morning in Chicago. We're going back uh, almost exactly 28 years ago now to uh, October 10th of 1948 for uh, some comedy with radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Corral as Amos and Andy. Say, Amos, this seems like Sunday. It is Sunday. You see, Andy, we is on the radio. It's Sunday on CBS for Rinso. That's right. Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium brings you the Amos and Andy Show. Yes, sir, Rinso, the soap that contains Solium, the sunlight ingredient, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> and now, Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Amos and Andy. <laughs> As the fall season rolls around once again, let us look in on the home of the kingfish and his wife, Sapphire Stevens. The time is noon. The kingfish has just come home for lunch to find Sapphire packing her bag. Sapphire, what you doing stuffing your clothes in the suitcase there? I'm taking a little trip to Chicago to visit Mama. You know, George, I ain't seen her for almost five years. I wonder what she looks like now. Yeah, well, don't get your hopes too high, Sapphire. Once you look like a walrus, you always look like a walrus. <laughs> Oh, I'm so anxious to see her. She wrote me that she's got a job working in a florist shop, and it makes her so happy to be surrounded by flowers. Yeah, you know, it'd make me happy to see her that way myself. <laughs> That'll do. I don't want to hear another word about it. Now, listen here, George. There's something you just got to do for me while I'm gone. Now, what's that? There's an old school chum of mine gets in town tomorrow from Georgia by the name of Lula Mae Simpson. Her husband passed on last year, and she's coming up here to look around for another husband, and we've got to help her. Yeah, well, what do you want me to do about it? I want you to introduce her to some nice, edible bachelor. <laughs> but none of them bums over at that large hall. Yeah, what does this uh, Luda May look like? Well, she happens to weigh 225 pounds, but she's got a real sweet face. See, here's a picture of her she sent me with the letter. And we just got to find her a husband. Let me see the picture. Here she is. Holy mackerel. Compared to her, a hippopotamus is a delicate creature. <laughs> George, we gotta get my girlfriend a husband. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna introduce her to nobody. Well, if you don't, then I ain't going, and I'll have Mama visit us. Visit us? Sweet Audrey has done blackmail me into it. All right. <laughs> Porter, come in. I ain't seen you for months. Oh, charming to see you, Kingfish. Yeah, tell me, Henry, did you have a nice summer? Oh, yes, we had a long motor trip. We went from here out to California to see that place where they have the big redwoods, Joe Cemetery Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we panhandled through Texas and ended up at White Sulfuric Springs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you had quite a trip there, son. Oh, yes. How about you, Kingfish? Did you escape the heat of the city this summer? Oh, uh, yeah, me and my wife, Sapphire, went up on the roof a couple of times, squirted the holes on each other. Mm. <laughs> Sapphire is taking a little trip now, though. She left yesterday for her mother's, thank goodness. Yeah, well, you should be all smiles. Yeah, but I got a tough job, Henry. Uh, Sapphire's got a gal friend that gets in town today that uh, wants to get married. And Sapphire wants me to introduce her to some legible bachelors, you mm -hmm. see. It's a gal built like an elephant by the name of uh, Lula Mae Simpson. Just come up from Georgia. Lula Mae Simpson? Wait Lula a minute. Mae. Wait a minute here. There's an item in the society column about her in today's newspaper. In the society column? Yes, and it says she was left a $20,000 estate by her late husband, and she's planning to spend the entire winter in our city. $20,000? You know, Henry... If I could find some guy to marry her, I could collect a marriage broker's fee. Oh, I'd be on easy speed. I wonder who I could get. 
Well, I ain't got the faintest idea. But I had just seen him walking toward the pool room. <laughs> oh. So Anders at the pool hall, huh? Yes, you know, Kingfish, maybe this scheme of yours will work. If you get them together, maybe Dan Cupid will hit Andy with the arrow. Yeah, well, if you don't hit Andy, he certainly can't miss Lula me, I tell you that. <laughs> to come into office here, if I can just make him think that I was a marriage broker, maybe I can stick him with that fat gal, Lula May, and that way get a credit of 20000 Oh, Uh-oh, here you come now. I'll get on the telephone here. Hi there, Kingfish. What you doing? Uh, I was a marriage broker, and uh, with clients all over the world. There's a big shortage of women. Right now, I was waiting for a long-distance call from Australia. Australia? Uh, wait a minute. Here it come now. Uh, hello? Uh, who is this, Australia? Oh, hello, Ozzy. <laughs> What's the trouble? Oh, you say you was at the church waiting to get married and you can't find a wife, huh? Well, that's too bad. I see. Yeah, well, my advice to you is to grab the first good-looking kangaroo that comes along. <laughs> yeah, what are you all spoken for, huh? Oh, this shortage is really worldwide. Sorry, I can't help you. Well, goodbye. Happy boomerang to you and all that stuff. See you later. Goodbye. Say, Kingfish, uh, what is this word, worldwide thing you're talking about? Uh, Andy, it's a shortage of women. You know, of course, that there's a shortage of women. I'll say. The one I took out last night only come up to my belt buckle. <laughs> no, no, and I mean that there ain't enough women to go around. Ain't you heard about it? No, the drought ain't hit me yet. Yeah. I was just thinking the other night, on the basis of smooching, this has been my best year since 1941. <laughs> no, 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 there's a shortage, and a uh, matter of fact, statistics prove that within the next 10 years, if the shortage of women keeps up, one out of five babies will be born without a mother. Well, what is they doing about the situation? Well, uh, with the shortage in this part of the country, we has got to bring women from another part of the country where they got a longage, you see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, the situation is bad, Andy. Yeah, well, maybe I ought to do something about this shortage of women. Yeah, you're right. Now, you as my pal, maybe I can help you. Let me look at my list here. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we are. I got it. Holy Moses, you was in luck. There's one that's just been imported from Georgia that's worth $20,000 in cash. $20,000? Sounds like she's a lovely woman. I'll take her. What's she look like? Uh, her name is Lula Mae Simpson. Or maybe I got a picture of her here. Yeah, here she is right here. Look at that. Wow. The way she's puffed out there, she must have that $20,000 around her waist and a $1 bill. <laughs> She's a little fat in this picture, Andy, but the photographer done took what's called a double exposure, you see. Yeah, but I tell you, Andy, for $20,000, you can forget a little blubber, you know. Oh, Kingfish, I couldn't even get my arms around her waist. Yes, you can if you time it right. Just watch her breathing and catch her on the inhale. That's it. She got $20,000, huh? Yeah. Where does she make all that money at? Raffling? Oh, no. Well, she's a mighty big woman. And look here, you just judging by the surface. Underneath that fat, she's probably very skinny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right, you know, and that $20,000 has put me on easy street. Well, too. now, look here, you don't get the whole 20. Now, wait a minute. You see, there's a marriage broker fee of 50%. You got to split that money with me, you see. 50%? Ain't that a lot? No, no, no. Well, don't forget, I'm going uh, to help you now uh, split the expenses of the courtship with her. Oh. The cost of the engagement ring and all that stuff. Yeah, but how come you're taking 50%? Oh, that's the fee set by the government, and on all marriages where the broker arranges the marriage before the groom ever sees the bride. Oh, that's in the Constitution. That's what they call the pig in the poker. Uh, well, okay, it's a deal. I'll give you 50%. You think this thing is going to work out good for me, King of Fish? Oh, Andy, with all that dough, you be going around and saying... I is in the money. And it's going to be a great day. When you're down and out, lift up your hands and shout. It's going to be a great day. Hallelujah, brother. Angels in the sky. Promise that by and by. That's going to be a great day. Halle, hallelujah. Morning, morning, you will hear it on. It's not far away. Hold up your hand and say, There's going to be a great day. Hallelujah. When skies were dark, came Noah's Ark. Amen. When lions roared, came Daniel's blood. Amen. Lord, help those who pray. If you believe he will return.
receive you. From early morn, you will hear his horn. It's not far away. Hold up your hands and say, there's going to be a great, great day, great day. Great days are coming. Gather great round, you congregation. Get yourself right to that station. There's going to be a great, 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 great day. This is your old friend, John Lake, and I must say it's mighty nice to be back talking to you again. Especially about wonderful new Rinso with Solium. You know, every time I saw a Rinso wash last summer, with all those white clothes whiter than new and gay washable colors even brighter than new, I said to myself, John, you're not going to be really happy until you're back on the air telling people about new Rinso. Now, only new Rinso can do this amazing thing. White clothes actually come whiter than new, and washable colors brighter. I think that's really something. Matter of fact, today's rinse is so different from ordinary soaps, you can even dry clothes indoors on a rainy day, and they'll turn out swell. rinse with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Now, this sounds marvelous, but if you've ever tried new rinse you know it's absolutely true. Wonderful faith soapy, rich, new Rinso with Solium. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. And that's the first uh, portion of the Amos and Andy show from October 10th of 1948. Good comedy there. The marriage broker indeed. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. Cloudy and cool today with a high in the middle 40s. Mostly cloudy, colder tonight with a low in the low or mid-30s. And tomorrow, we'll get up to the middle 40s under partly sunny skies. It's 39 degrees officially at Midway, 38 at O'Hare, 44 along the lake shore. Humidity is 79% and the wind out of the north at 10 miles an hour. Football weather, right? Charlie McCarthy in a football uniform. Can you picture that? Little Charlie McCarthy in a uh, regulation size football uniform. Well, regulation cut to scale to fit Charlie. That's who you'll find, along with Edgar Bergen, on the cover of our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide for November. And that is just the beginning of another 32-page issue of Fun and Memories. A one-year subscription to our Nostalgia Guide is now only $7, and you will get your money's worth in good reading and good information. Page after page of photos and articles from and about the good old days, as, <coughs> excuse me, as well as the complete schedule of old-time shows, that we broadcast every morning here on WXFM, on Saturday afternoons on WNIB, and on Thursday nights on WBEZ. It's the complete schedule with lots of information about our programming, dates of original broadcast, performers, guests, and more. Subscribe now to our Nostalgia Newsletter. Give us a call at 545-2260. That's 545-2260. Leave your name and address. Your subscription will begin with the November issue. We'll include an invoice for your one-year subscription, $7. Call us at 545-2260. If you're in a rush at the moment and you can't take the time to give us a call, jot the number down, write it on the little pad where you put your grocery list, and say, uh, newsletter, 545-2260. Or if you like, send $7 to Nostalgia Newsletter Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. But if you think of it, pick up the phone and dial us up, 545-2260. American technology always comes up with labor-saving devices. At the Player Piano Parlor in Wheeling, we've got the best one yet, you. That's right. You can save a lot of money if you rebuild an old player piano yourself, and we've got the books, charts, and all the materials you need. We'll also provide our years of expertise by giving you pointers and tips as you go along. When the hoogee just doesn't seem to fit on the dingbat, well, give us a call, and we'll probably be able to tell you what to do right over the phone. So if Grandma left you a player piano, or there's one you can pick up at a house sale, come in or call us first. We can advise you whether or not to acquire the piano at all. Some are not worth rebuilding. And then, if the piano's okay, you can buy all the hose, tubing, bellows cloth, manuals, and books you need for less than $100 and rebuild the player yourself. The Player Piano Parlor in Wheeling at 459 South Milwaukee Avenue, just one half mile south of Dundee Road. 
We're open six days a week till 8 p.m., Sundays till 6. Call us at 541-5850. 541-5850. We are the experts. Take advantage of us. And uh, that would be a very good idea to do that, too. Now let's get back to Amos and Andy. <laughs> What you doing standing outside of Shorty's Barbershop? Hello, Amos. I'm waiting for the kingfish. Did you hear the big news about me? About you? No, I ain't, Andy. What's happened to you? I'm going to get an upsell later. Uh, <laughs> you going to get what, Daddy? What about, I, 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 that got me a little there. What you going to get, uh... Well, to an ignorant fellow like you, that means I'm going to get married. In other words, Amos, I'm going to enter into holy deadlock. <laughs> So why is this happening all of a sudden? Listen, Amos, in ten years, there are going to be five babies born to every short mother. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't exactly understand what you're talking about, Andy. Who is you marrying? Well, she just got to town from Georgia in a poke. She's a pig. <laughs> well, I got my constitutional rights, all right. Yeah, I don't understand this, Andy. Well, don't worry, Amos. I was getting $20,000 worth of blubber. Yeah. Here comes the kingfish now. I'll see you later. Yeah, well, drop over to the house sometime there if you have your head examined. So long. Yeah, I'll do that. So long. Hi, kingfish. Well, hello there, and I say, listen, you didn't tell Amos too much, did you? Oh, he's so ignorant, he don't know what I'm talking about, no way. Well, come on, let's get on in the barbershop here and see Shorty. Hi, Shorty. Oh, well, there's my pal. How is you? Well, I'll be goddamn. Look who uh, what's cooking. Uh, you, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm
they make a lot of money in the oil and cattle business. Oh, yeah, not only the oil and cattle business, but uh, he's got uh, millions from other things, too. Now, let's see. Uh, you made a lot of money in... Uh, in lumber, too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I sure did. They discovered trees on my property. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that Texas is really some state, all right. Oh, you Texans always stand up for Texas. Yeah, well, if you was in the saddle 12 hours a day, you'd be glad to stand up for anything. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Longhorn, uh, uh, what was that generous thing you done the other day to show that you don't care nothing about money? Oh, you mean last Thursday when I give away to Grand Canyon? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I meant to... Uh, uh, like I told you, Miss Simpson, Miss Brown is in New York for the social season. You know, parties, theaters, going to the opera and symphonies. Oh, then you're interested in music? Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Brown is always slapping up that culture stuff, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, tell me, what is your taste in symphonies? Mm, I don't know. I ain't never tasted none. <laughs> well, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Brown, uh, your travel agent called this morning and wanted to know if you was going to Europe on the Queen Mary or the Queen Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, well, did you take care of it? Yeah, I told him to buy both. Hope you'd make up your mind when he got down to the pier. Oh, you're planning a trip to Europe? Oh, yeah, he visits the Riviera every year. You see, Mr. Brown here's got a chateau over there. Yeah, next year I'm going to build a house on it, too. <laughs> the most charming man I ever met. Yeah. I do hope I'll see you again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you will, uh, Miss Simpson. After all, I don't think Miss Brown will hold it against you just because you only got $20,000. Oh, no. I have always wanted to get to know the poor people's better. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we must be leaving. Goodbye, Miss Simpson. Uh, millionaire Brown here has got to get back to his office at the stock market. Uh, by the way, Brown, uh, how is the ticket today? Well, I was a little worried at first, but the doctor found out it was just gas. <laughs> Uh, 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 wait a minute, uh, Miss Brown, uh, there was something you wanted to ask, Mrs. Simpson. There was? Yeah, remember you were telling me how delightful it would be if you and her had supper together this evening? Oh, that would be lovely, Mr. Brown. Yeah, well, don't cook nothing special. I'll just take pot luck. <laughs> Come in, Brother Ender. Hi, Kingfish. Well, I ain't seen you for about five days, lover boy. Uh, we has got that rich widow in the bag, ain't we, son? Wait a minute, Kingfish. Wait a minute. I ain't told you, but it done happened last night. Holy mackerel. Now, wait a minute. I don't like the looks on your face, Brother Ender. Don't tell me that you done put the skids under all that money we're getting. Well, you know, Kingfish, I've been courting Lula May in the daytime and kissing all my other gals goodbye at night. Mm, yeah, natural. Just like any other honest man would do. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, last night I took a cute little gal to the movies. Yeah? I wanted to get in some last-minute scooching before I married Lula May in the dry spell that then. <laughs> anyway, we were sitting there smooching, and when the lights went on, somebody started beating me over the head with an umbrella. I looked around, and it was Lula May sitting right behind me. I ain't seen her since. And uh, why did you do a thing like that? I have done pawned my furniture to raise $250, bought you that diamond engagement ring for you to give her, or we is in a mess. We got to get a hold of Stonewall and lawyer right away. We'll get... <laughs> you know, I traveled around some last summer, and everywhere I went, I made it a point to ask housewives how they like new Rinso with sodium. Well, every time I so much as mentioned Rinso, I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm. You'd think the women were selling Rinso, not I. Rinso with solium, they said, actually gets white clothes whiter than new, and washable colors brighter than new. Even on rainy days, even when your wash must be dried indoors, you get a brighter wash. New Rinso gives your wash a brilliance you've never known before. Now, it's because today's Rinso contains solium, the scientific sunlight ingredient. And only Rinso has it. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. I think you'd better find out for yourself about wonderful new Rinso. I think you'd better see for yourself right away how Rinso with solium puts sunshine in your wash. And that's the uh, second segment there of Amos and Andy from um, October 10th of 1948. We'll get back to this in just a moment or so. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. You may be uh, at home this morning listening to Amos and Andy, uh, but how would you like to uh, 
How would you like to listen to Amos and Andy anytime you like while you're riding around in your, uh, uh, in your Oldsmobile 98? Well, you can, you know. The folks over at Imperial Leasing at 900 East Rand Road in Des Plaines have come up with an unusual idea for old-time radio fans. They will lease you our cassette tape of the month each month for only $170 a month. And they will also include a brand-new 1977 Olds 98 automobile, all in that same monthly lease price. That's our regular cassette tape of the month. And uh, somewhere along the line, it's bound to be Amos and Andy. This month, it's Frankenstein and the Lodger. Uh, those are not radio's all-time favorites. Those are uh, a couple of guys on a ghost-to-ghost -ghost hookup. Anyway, you'll get uh, that tape, a new one each month, plus a quality AM and FM stereo radio cassette player, plus a 1977 Olds 98, all for just $170 a month. Good old-fashioned prices and service at Imperial Leasing, 900 East Rand Road in Des Plaines. Give them a call and get all the details. Call 298-0011. Imperial Leasing, 2980011. Ask for the cassette tape of the month leasing program. 29 minutes past 8 o'clock, Northwest Federal Savings Time. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. Ready with the answers and advice given by professionals in helping thousands just like you but each with different individual needs. Northwest Federal's professionals can show you, too, the best way to save for a new home, a college education, or for retirement. Northwest Federal's counselors can explain all the savings plans and help you set up a savings program to meet your special needs. Home loan specialists can tailor a home loan plan to help make your dreams a reality. Bring your needs to any of five convenient Northwest Federal savings centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. If you think your needs are special, so does Northwest Federal Savings. All the time, because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. It's Northwest Federal Savings time, 63 hours a week. Now let's get back to the last segment of Amos and Andy. <laughs> Lawyer, come in. Yeah, I'm sorry I was late, boys. I've been in court today defending a woman client. Yeah, what happened? Well, some woman called me up and asked me if I would defend her in court, you know, give her some tips on how to beat the case. Uh-huh, yeah, go ahead, please. I told her I couldn't get there till the last minute, but I'd give her some advice on the phone and told her how to act going up to the witness stand. Mm -hmm. I told her, roll eyes at the jury and the Smile and wink at the judge. <laughs> Wear a form fitting satin dress with the sheer nylon hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how'd she come out? Uh, she lost the case. I didn't know she was 93 years old. Oh. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, Jeff Stonewall. Look here. Uh, uh, we has got a problem, too, you know. You see, I'm going to tell you a secret here now, and, and we need some advice on it. You see, Andy is engaged to a wealthy widow. And last night, she caught him smooching in a moving picture show with another gal. She was sitting right behind him, and is sitting there with another gal right up in front of her, smooching there, and now she won't even talk to him. Yeah, and the funny thing is, she's worth 20,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. Who talks to you, huh? Not a word. <laughs> yeah, well, well, why don't you play on a sympathy? You know, let me tell you, I saw a moving picture once where a fella had a fight with his gal, and he went off and joined the French Foreign Legion. And when his gal heard about it, she was so broken hearted, she forgave him for everything. Mm. Hey, Andy, that is it. We'll get Lula May to think that you was in the French Foreign Legion. I got an old large uniform at home. We'll fix it up a little. And then when you walks in with it on you, you throw us around a little French, you know, you say, Vive la France and Sailor Gear and all that stuff. You, you know that? Yeah, that's good. You'll get Lula May over to the lodge hall, Kingfish. And I'll come in all dressed up like a French soldier. Well, Stonewall, you is really a pal. Don't forget to send us a bill for this. Ah, I wish all my clients was like you, yeah. You know, I had one client I worked like a dog to get him off on a murder charge. I give him the advantage of all of my legal experience. He was so ungrateful, he didn't even pay the bill I sent him. You mean defended him in a murder charge? Well, you know, maybe he didn't, uh, the bill didn't even reach him. Oh, he got it all right. 
I even got proof he was carrying the bill in his pocket. Well, how could you tell? This morning it come back from Sing Sing all scorched round edges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> May just calm down. Will you please just calm down? I ask you to come over to my office here to tell you that Andy is broken hearted and he is done joined up with the French Foreign Legion. He's even wearing the uniform. The French Foreign Legion? Why, I can hardly believe it. Well, that sounds like the French Foreign Legion knock now. Wait a minute. Come in. <laughs> Why, Andy. Excuse me, folks. Did you see any Arabs go through here? <laughs> Are you really joined the French Foreign Legion? Yes, I. Vivian LaFrance and Sailors in Gear. Yeah. Dad, are you really going overseas? Yes, sir. I'm going over with the first ship of the Legionites. And I have joined the most dangerous branch of the French Foreign Legion. The branch that carries the guns. <laughs> oh, Andy. It sounds like I'll never see you again. Yeah, that's right, Lula Mae. Nobody that ever joins the Legion ever comes back. Yeah, the fact is, they are so sure that you you get knocked off that they send you into battle with a coffin strapped right on your back. That's what they do. Oh, you mean there's no hope of me ever seeing you again? I don't think so. You see, Lula made the Foreign Legion is the toughest outfit in the world. If you live long enough to get a discharge, they shoot you as a coward. That's yeah. what they do. That's right. The only way to save your own life is to commit suicide. Boy, oh, yeah. oh, this is very sad, Lula May, and all this happens just because you broke his heart. Well, I'd like to hear an explanation of why he was out with another girl. Yeah, I'd like to hear that myself. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, wait a minute, uh, uh, Lula May, we can explain that. Uh, you see, uh, that other gal that uh, you seen him with uh, in the moving picture show, uh, 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 that was uh, Andy's sister. <laughs> Right, uh, come to think of it, that was my sister, all right. Your sister? Well, why were you taking her to the movies? Uh, well, now, you see, Andy's brother-in-law was out of town, and Andy was sort of taking his place and doing what he would do. Yes, but well, why were you kissing her? Uh, well, uh, you see, uh, Andy can't help it if his brother-in-law is a little affectionate, you know. He can't help that. Well, but, Andy, if this is true, why didn't you explain it last night? Well, it's pretty hard to talk when somebody's beating you over the head with an umbrella. <laughs> well, Andy, dear... I've decided to forgive you. Oh, this is great. Look here, honey. I done bought you your engagement ring. Here you is. Oh, Andy, this is wonderful. Oh, that's a real diamond there. Yes, yeah, you know, Andy, little old me is just crazy about little old you. And little old me is just crazy about big fat you. <laughs> Everything is all set for the wedding. Yeah, stop by the telegraph office and wire the Foreign Legion not to count on me this time. Don't worry, my love birds. I'll send a straight telegram direct to General de Gaulstone. <laughs> yeah. Well, Andy, it took us just about a week to put over this whole thing. Tomorrow you marry the rich widow. And just to think, we get 20,000 smacks. Yeah, but this courtship has done cost me money, you know. Yeah, well, don't forget, I put up $250 of it, and I want my half of that $20,000, in fact. Yeah. Well, well, Sapphire, when did you get back in town? Hello, George, dear. Hello, Andy. Hi. I got in about two hours ago. Well, Sapphire, I've got a big surprise for you. Some wonderful news. Your friend Lula May is getting married tomorrow. Why, George, that's wonderful. Oh, I must go call her up. Oh, and before I tell you about the groom, I just want to say that it was a lucky thing that that society column told about her and her in $20,000 from her first husband. Oh, I'm so glad. I told her to put that in the paper so she could hook a rich husband. She ain't got a nickel. Oh, oh, well, I... oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday night is a new night for us on the radio. If you have an opportunity, we would appreciate you telling your friends of this new time each Sunday night for the Amos and Andy Show on the Columbia Broadcasting System. And we'd appreciate one more thing, folks, and that's when you go to your grocery store. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we would greatly appreciate you buying Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium. You will be surprised and delighted at the new Rinso. Thank you, and good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Yeah. Be 
sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of new Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Until then, good night to all of you from all of us. And there you have Amos and Andy from October 10th of 1948. De 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 de. That theme song there, of course, was their theme song from the very beginning. In the uh, in the beginning, it was uh, uh, an organ accompanying the opening of the 15-minute Amos and Andy show when they first started way back in the late 20s and early 30s. Uh, Gaylord Carter was one of the uh, the organists uh, over the years with the Amos and Andy show. This is Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on the FM dial. How would you like to hear the Amos and Andy theme song? It was called The Perfect Song. How would you like to hear it played on the mighty Wurlitzer organ at the Chicago Theater? Well, of course, uh, over the radio it doesn't do justice. But that's about what you'll hear if you come to our uh, Those Were the Days Night of Nostalgia at the Chicago Theater a week from this coming Thursday on November the 4th. The Chicago Area Theater Organ Enthusiast is presenting this Night of Nostalgia. And uh, Walter Stroney will play the perfect song, the Amos and Andy theme song on the Mighty Wurlitzer at the Chicago Theater, along with some other fantastic things that you will hear uh, some of the things that made the Roaring Twenties roar on the mighty Wurlitzer. A great night of nostalgia. We will be there as master of ceremonies and your guide to an evening of, uh, of uh, great memories. Uh, we'll have a sing-along and a silent film with organ accompaniment. I promise you I will not sing during the sing-along. I may sing, but I will not lead you on the sing-along. So that's a, that's a point in favor of coming anyway. And um, we will be talking and listening to the sounds of the golden age of radio. Walter Stroney will be talking about our playing uh, a tribute to uh, Jesse and Helen Crawford, who made the Wurlitzer mighty at the Chicago Theater back in the good old days. There'll be a salute to George Gershwin, to um, movie uh, music. Uh, just a great evening of uh, great memories, and I hope that you can join us. Tickets are $3.50 each by mail. Advanced sale tickets are $3.50. The night of the uh, show, they'll be $4. But, of course, it's always good to plan ahead, and it certainly helps the Cato people get this thing underway. November 4th at 8 o'clock, if you want to get your tickets now, send $3.50 for each ticket to Cato, C-A-T-O-E, 6244 West Eddy, Chicago 60634. You can uh, pick up advanced sale tickets at 350 at the Chicago Theater box office, or we have them at our MGM shop at 5120 Irving Park Road. If you need more information about the program, call Cato at 282-0037, or don't hesitate to give us a buzz. We have all the information. We'll be happy to pass the info along to you when we have a little bit more time. The Night of Nostalgia, those were the days at the Chicago Theater when was the last time you were at the Chicago Theater? When was the last time you saw, saw a stage presentation at the Chicago Theater? Well, the next time can be Thursday, November the 4th. I hope you can join us for that. I'm really looking forward to it, and I, uh, I think that uh, neither of us will be disappointed if we get together that night. <laughs> Money, 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 money means good luck for me. 
Vista Gailey Star. I found my lucky star. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet. WXFM 106 on your FM dial. The War of the Worlds, Orson Welles' uh, panic broadcast about the Martian invasions is available as an October cassette special this month for only $5 from the hall closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Also this month, we have our regular October cassette tape of the month. It's uh, two great chillers, Frankenstein and The Lodgers. They're also available for only $5 from the Hall Closet. You can pick these tapes up at the uh, any office of Northwest Federal Savings, or you can get them at our MGM shop, where you'll find all kinds of uh, cassettes. Every single one of our previous cassettes of the month is available there. Previous cassettes uh, are $6 each. You'll also find lots of old-time radio shows on 8-track tapes and on LP records. So uh, you can pop over to the MGM shop uh, for a wide selection. And if you want the cassette tape of the month, Frankenstein and the Lodger, and or uh, the War of the Worlds broadcast, send $5 for each of those to the Hall Closet Box 421 Morton Grove 60053, or pick them up at the any office of Northwest Federal Savings. Now we move back to December 20th of 1939 for our weekly Tuesday morning visit with Captain Midnight. Company presents Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you five times each week by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Skelly, as you know, was the originator of tailor made gasoline, the famous Skelly Aeromax. Gasoline that's weather right for your car. But now, I have something to say for the Skell Gas Company, which is a part of the Skelly Oil Company. And I want all you fellows and girls who live out beyond the city gas mains to pay particularly close attention tonight, because this is the last time for many, many weeks that I'll have an opportunity to tell you anything about Skell Gas. Skell Gas, as you know, is not gasoline. Skell Gas, spelled S-K-E-L-G-A-S, is rich, pure, natural gas compressed in strong steel containers and delivered to your home by your local Skell Gas dealer. Used with a modern Skell Gas kitchen range, Skell Gas is the ideal fuel for those who live beyond the city gas main. It brings you all the convenience and comfort and cleanliness of city gas service. It banishes the dirt and drudgery of kitchen fire tending. And the best part of it is, Skell Gas actually costs less 
then you're probably paying right now for troublesome, wasteful, old-fashioned fuel. So tell your dad and mother about Skell Gas. Tell them you think a brand new modern Skell Gas kitchen range would be an ideal Christmas present the whole family will enjoy for years to come. And tell them this, too. Your Skell Gas dealer is making an amazing free Christmas gift offer. He's giving a beautiful 57-piece set of colored dinnerware with every Skell Gas kitchen range he sells this week. This gorgeous 57-piece set of colored dinnerware has sold in leading stores for as high as $14.95. But your dad and mother can get it absolutely free if they order their new Skell Gas kitchen range before Christmas. So, fellas and girls, here's your chance to do mother and dad a real favor. Tell them about this amazing free Christmas gift offer your Skell Gas dealer is making this week. Tell them they can see both the Skell Gas kitchen range and the big free 57-piece dinnerware set at their Skell Gas dealers tonight. And now to Captain Midnight. The famous pilot does not know that his flight to the Aztec Temple is exactly what Ivan Shark has planned. As our scene opens today, it's in the middle of the morning, shortly after the party's arrival at the temple. Pebbles and Patsy Donovan have been on a tour of exploration. And as we find them, they're standing on the west side of the temple, on the edge of the jungle. Patsy has just discovered the presence of footprints on the flagstones near them. Listen as Pablo explains. See, Patsy, they are the footprints. I was sure they were, but I couldn't believe my eyes. These men have come from the jungle, Patsy. I can see that very well because there's much water and mud in the jungle, and the feet, they get wet. And when they step out on the flagstones, they make them marks for everyone to see. Loop and loop, Pebbles, you're absolutely right. Gosh, I wonder how old these prints are. How long ago were they made? Oh, it is hard to say, Patsy. We do not know. But gee, Pebbles, we can figure it out. Because of the hot sun, the mud probably dried quite quickly. Whoever made this footprint had a lot of mud on his shoes, and he even stopped to scrape it off. But how do you know that, me amigo? Look over to your left. See that upturned flagstone? It's got a sharp edge, and someone has scraped the bottoms of his shoes on it. You see all that mud that's stuck to the edge? Hot diggity dog. Your eyes, they do not miss anything, Patsy. Now, now look close to the water. There are two footprints, and then a little bit nearer to us, there are two more. You're right, Pebbles. And look at the first two prints. They're both made with the right feet, and they're spaced about five feet apart. That means there must have been two people. Yes, for God, you are right. And the next thing is, are they both men? But they must be the men, Patsy, for look. The footprints, they are, they are very large. You're right. Because look, when I put my foot down next to this print, you see how much bigger the print is? There is one thing more which we must find out. It is most important. Gosh, Pebbles, what is it? We find out that the two men come from the jungle into the temple. They come in, but do they come out? Perhaps they are still here. Remember, Pebbles, we've only been at the temple a half hour. And these men could have come in just before we arrived. You see, it's for that. But the thing that gets me is how anyone finds their way through the jungle. Look in there. Why, we'd be lost inside of five minutes. See, but there's the men in this country, Patsy, who know the jungle very well. They have to walk in the water and mud, but they keep away from the big horns. But there's one thing for sure, Pebbles. We've got to tell Captain Midnight about this right away, because it may make all the difference in his plans. Come on, let's go. In the meantime, two men are standing in a passageway below the temple. They are Von Griff, the former chief pilot of Ivan Shark, and the cutthroat known as Lutro, to whom Ivan Shark was selling the stolen Pareda herd. They're talking in low tone. Listen as Von Gretz says. Well, Lutro, let's get down to business. You make a deal or not? My dear Senor Von Griff, I am not a hard man to do business with. You have the knowledge which is valuable to me. I know the country and I have many men at my command. We can reach the agreement. You do not need to worry about that. Okay, then, what will it be? I've told you about the parade of treasure. It's somewhere in this building. Uh, what kind of a split do we make, eh? Yeah, but my dear one, grief without me, you are lost. You have no men. You do not even have the airplane. You could not even find your way to this temple without me. I know all the trails to the jungle, and I also know something about this temple which you do not. Mm, what is that? Uh, you will follow me up the stone steps, and I will show you. Uh, it is very, very interesting, I assure you. 
All right, Lutro, lead the way. As you know, this temple was built by the Aztec race many, many years ago. The kings were a very clever men, and they knew how to take care of their enemies. I've shown you the chamber in which you hear the word. Yes, that sure gave me the creeps, too. That chamber is below the water line of the river. In the old days, when the Aztec emperors wished to get rid of their enemies, they put them in that chamber, then they closed the stone door. Uh, now we, we are at the place. I will show you something. Shall I strike a match? Now I have the flashlight. Uh, now then. Hey, you see? Yes, I see. The wire levers. Well, what are they for? Uh, this one on my left closes and opens the stone door into the water chamber. Uh -huh. uh, this other one on my right opens the hole at the other end of the chamber, where the water from the river comes in. So, that's the trick, eh? <laughs> the chamber can be flooded. Yes, in me, amigo. It is very bad for the prisoner in the chamber. <laughs> uh, the water, it comes in little by little, and very slowly it rises to their ankles and then to their knees, <laughs> slowly upward until the water touches the ceiling. <laughs> and the prisoners can't get out, eh? Yes, uh, senor, that is the idea. Very clever, do you not think so? Uh, this is something that Ivan Shark would appreciate very much. Listen. What is the matter, mi amigo? I wonder if Ivan Shark has found out about the Parada treasure. He was just about to get that Dolores Parada to talk when I left. If he has found out about it, mi amigo, you can be sure that he will be here very soon. Yes, you're right about that. Shark doesn't miss any opportunities. But uh, now, my dear Van Grief, uh, about our agreement... Uh, we'll go over that in a few minutes. All right. Now, uh, let us go out to get the breath of fresh air. I, I do not like to be in here for the longer time. Okay, let's go. Just to soon get out of here myself. But we've got to come back again and see if we can find that treasure. And now then, uh, we come out to the fresh air. We will go. And what's the matter, Luto? What are you looking at? Look, me, amigo. Look through the casement in the wall. Who is that? Captain Midnight. That's who it is. Ah, El Capitan Midnight, eh? the gentleman you were telling me about. Eh? Yes, and he's the one man in the world Ivan Shark is afraid of. He pretends he isn't, but I know better. Well, mi amigo, this becomes a very interesting. If the Captain Midnight is here, perhaps Ivan Shark will come too. But Captain Midnight has cut off our retreat. Who is the girl and the boy with him? The girl is Patsy Donovan, but the boy... At first, I thought it was the one called Chuck Ramsey, but now I see it is not. Look around, Grief. They have discovered our trail. See, they look at the footprints on the flagstone. Uh, will you know this place? Isn't there some other way we can get out? Uh, wait, me amigo. Let us watch this Captain Midnight. I am sure we will find out something about it. Yes, you're right, Patsy. I see the tracks of two men. They came out of the jungle and went toward the temple. See, El Capitan, but we do not know whether the men are still in the temple or not. They could have come back. And if they did, their feet wouldn't make any print. That's right. They'd be dry by that time. It must be the men of Ivan Shark. Well, that's possible, Pebbles. But let's not jump to conclusions. There must be others who know about this temple. Look, the prince leads straight toward that doorway leading into the western courtyard. We'll follow them as far as we can. But keep behind me, you two. See you, Captain Midnight. I'll follow right behind Pebbles. All right, come on now. Let's start. Well, the prints are clear up to here, but they're getting fainter very rapidly. I'm beginning to think that whoever came in must have gone back out. The mud in those prints down by the jungle was almost dry. Well, that's pretty hard to say, Patsy. But we may be able to see some sign on the other side of the door. We come to the doorway now. These men, they could have gone in many different directions. But look, there's a doorway straight ahead on the other side of the courtyard, which leads into the temple proper. If anyone wanted to go into the temple, that's the one they probably would use. Yes, I think you're right. Now listen, you two stay here. I'm going to that door and look inside. If I don't come back within five minutes, run and get the others. He 
enters the courtyard now. Hey, the boy and the girl are staying behind. Hey, this is very excellent. Get your gun out, Luthro. Here's where we do some business, and we'll do it quick. You don't like this El Capitan Midnight, uh, no, it's not a damn. Uh, you bet I don't like him. He's caused me plenty of trouble in the past. Next to Shark, I hate him more than anybody else in the world. And this is my chance to get rid of him. But, mi amigo, think for one moment. El Capitan Midnight, he would like to catch Ivan Shark. Very good. Suppose we help him. And then after he has caught him, then we get rid of them both. <laughs> I believe you've got something there. We'll do it. Well, Captain Midnight is approaching a doorway and sudden death lurks in the shadows behind it. When he sees Von Griff, will Captain Midnight's hand dart toward his gun? If it does. But see for yourself what happens in the exciting adventure tomorrow. Tune in to Captain Midnight. And uh, we'll wait until uh, next Tuesday morning here rather than tomorrow uh, in the uh, hall closet to find out what happens to uh, Captain Midnight. The old clock on the studio wall says it's time for us to go for now, but we'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same station, with more sounds of entertainment from the hall closet. Tomorrow morning, we'll be tuning in to uh, a mail call program from Armed Forces Radio with uh, Harry Von Zell, Kenny Baker, and Janet Blair. We'll have a Jimmy Durante show from 1948, and we'll have Vic and Sade. So why don't you stick around for that? This is Chuck Shaden. Thanks for listening. So you plan to buy a new Pontiac, huh? Well, that's a wise choice. Pontiac is a car you'll be proud of now and for many years to come. And you plan to buy it now. Another wise decision. The repairs on an older car would equal or exceed several payments on a brand new, beautiful Pontiac. Clark Pontiac at 800 West Madison in Oak Park has just the beautiful new Pontiac that's right for you. You really can't go wrong if it's a Pontiac, and if you buy it at Clark Pontiac, 800 West Madison in Oak Park. Clark Pontiac is the suburb's favorite dealer. People come to Clark from all over Chicagoland because they know Clark Pontiac's reputation for courtesy and price. So how about you? Isn't it time you got a car that you'll be proud of? And isn't it good news to know that Clark Pontiac will save you money? Now that your plans include Pontiac, you owe to yourself to include Clark. That's Clark Pontiac at the stoplights, corner of Madison and Oak Park Avenue in Oak Park. Clark and Pontiac, they go together. You're listening to WXFM, Elmwood Park in Chicago, broadcasting from Sears Tower at 106 on FM. It's 9 o'clock. What were you reading when the Wall Street Journal published a major analysis on just one strike and its effect on the entire economy? You would have not only gotten a graphic picture of the heavy shockwave sustained by a major company, but also learned of the deeper impact on business and consumers all across the country. It's a strikingly informative story on the walkout that wasn't supposed to happen. What were you reading when the journal revealed the facts behind a full-scale housing boom that is shaking up California real estate as much as the San Andreas Fault, with families camping out for days near new developments just for a chance at a new home? What were you reading when the journal reported on a new kind of bank examiner? They're the uneasy big depositors who are worried about the many bank failures lately. Now it is they who are putting their banks through the credit checking ringer for a change. Shouldn't you have been reading the Wall Street Journal that day? Make sure it's on your desk every business day. Subscribe now. Now you can get a subscription rate that really saves you money. 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal. That's 65 copies for just $11.18. Only 86 cents a week. Just call 943-7474. 943-7474. You'll be billed later. 943-7474. Call now. Now it's time to go out to Oak Park, and uh, here's Cliff Johnson. Thank you very much. My news line is going just as we hit the air. Good morning. Somebody wondered who that was. Thank you, Ron Ray. Uh, we'll probably be pretty busy on the line this morning because uh, I don't know where you are, but in Oak Park, Illinois, the 
Uh, villagers are reminded that the president and board of trustees of Oak Park, Illinois, have adopted a resolution to recommend limiting Halloween activities, particularly all those little youngsters trick-and-treating, to Friday, October 29. Such activity <clears throat> would be between the hours of 3.30 and 8 p.m., and getting all those youngsters off the street after dark. Uh, I expect that I'll be hearing from Mr. Doss, who handles the recreation department in Oak Park, and maybe wherever you are in your community, too. I guess we're living in a time and an era when it isn't uh, comfortable for youngsters to be running around picking up candy and the crossing streets after dark. For years, our five children had us dragged out till all hours of the night, and uh, we went right along with them the whole evening. But, you know, some youngsters nowadays are a little more sophisticated. They don't think mom and pop should be running along anyway, tagging. And all kinds of things can happen. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's rather a sad commentary on our times, but, you know, for those of us, that mother would open the front door and say, go on, the world is yours, and it's safe, and it's beautiful, and go. It, it ain't so anymore, and you just have to sit down and recognize the fact that these youngsters are, are not safe out trick-and-treating uh, beyond eight o'clock, especially eight, nine-year-old children, or any age for that matter. So that'll be coming up, and we'll ask for some comment from the Recreation Department. Also, uh, we're looking ahead to Oak Park's uh, championship basketball team retaining their position as number three in the state, and Jim Perkins will be calling in from the, re from the uh, high school on that. Also, the villagers are reminded, and wherever you are, that the swine flu vaccination program will begin with immunizations uh, at least in this suburb on Saturday, October 30, and it will start at 7 a.m. and go to 7 p.m. And Sunday, October 31, uh, they, they call first for people 60 years of age and older and for the medically high-risk individuals age 18 and over. And this year, <coughs> excuse me, they may do so by, by calling, of course, their own health department in Oak Park, Illinois. It's 3836400, ask for the health department. If you're, if you're going to have immunization and you're in a high risk group, and we'll find out from Dr. Till who's considered a high risk to take the flu shot, then you should get from your personal physician an approval card. Uh, which you present to the health department when you go for the examination. Good morning. Good morning, Cliff. This is Dr. Till from the public health department. Ah, I was just talking about this. The swine flu shots begin this weekend, and I, I, I laid a little groundwork, Dr. Till, saying that the um, that people 60 years and older uh, will be the first on the immunization program. Is that right? That's correct. They, along with uh, those who are high-risk patients, well, who are high risk? Okay, there are five basic groups who would be classified as high risk patients. Uh, those are people with cardiac uh, problems, people with respiratory problems such as the cough I just heard, <laughs> uh, people with renal problems, uh, people who may be diabetic, uh, this type of person. People who ah. a physician would feel uh, should receive the vaccine the bivalent vaccine. That was me coughing. I had a cup of uh, my favorite uh, broth and with crackers and just before airtime, you know? Yes. So uh, if, <laughs> if a cup of soup and a cracker makes me higher risk, I'll be down right after the show. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, you know, the controversy has, has been uh, running rampant all over the country, and Dr. Till, I think a lot of it is a little unfair, especially when it happened in the, in the year of an election and got into the politics and all. But it seems to be proceeding along now to a point where realistically uh, the, the swine flu uh, shots are going to take place in an orderly fashion. That's correct. We have our program uh, very well in line. We've had uh, just a marvelous support from the community on volunteers for our first clinic. Uh, we have 32 nurses, 8 doctors, and uh, oh, 100 or so volunteers for the bivalent clinic starting October 30th and 31st. Mm -hmm. Outstanding response from the community as far as the workers are concerned. Uh, we have it uh, 
all together, so to speak. Uh, we do need volunteers for the November 13th and 14th clinic, which is a monovalent. When you say volunteers, what do these people do? Well, these are the people who will uh, greet people at the door, will uh, ask basic questions, such as, are you allergic to eggs, that sort of thing, a medically screening type of function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then people to swab arms, and then the professional volunteers, meaning nurses, doctors, that sort of mm -hmm. professional type person, for the actual inoculations, uh, those types of volunteers. As people would call into the health department, we would take down their names and then uh, ask them which function they would like to fill and uh, make the arrangements with them when they could work that sort of thing. Wouldn't it be helpful if uh, as many people as possible on a routine basis had the signature of their physician to proceed with something like this? You mean with the shots? And yeah, well, if he came in with a card and said my doctor says it's okay or it isn't okay, I, I, I have a feeling that how are you going to cull out those who may be a high risk if you don't know it? Oh, there are physician signature cards. Oh, I see. Uh, and uh, no, person cannot come in on the uh, bivalent uh, program yeah. without a physician signature. I see. We so have physician signature cards that they will contact their physician or the health department. If they contact their physician, the physician can contact us, we'll send them the cards. If they contact us and give us the name of their physician, we'll send either them or their physician the card. Good. Dr. Till, somebody else is on the line, too. Good morning. Hi, Cliff Thompson. Yeah, who is this? Billy Gold from Niles East Decca. Oh, listen, uh, hang on a second. I'm just talking with Dr. Till of the health department, uh, uh, Julie, uh, and I'll be right with you. Can you hang on a second? Yes. Sure. Okay, Dr. Till, this is a little gal from Niles is going to tell Oak Park what they're doing up there in the, in the way of uh, eavesdropping on our community, so they've got some things going up there, too. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Listen, Dr. Till, we'll, we'll stay with this thing and proceed and remind everyone then that the Oak Park Department of Public Health is conducting its first swine flu vaccination program this weekend and will be given on Saturday between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And thank you, Dr. Till. We'll keep uh, reminding people about it. Okay, it'll be Sunday, too, from 7 to 4. Ah, uh, good deal. Okay, thank you, Cliff. You're welcome, right, sir. Bye now. Bye-bye. Julie? Yes? Are you there? Yes. Can you get a little farther into the phone? Yes. Get closer into the phone, dear. Okay. There, now you're coming through, because... So, uh, if somebody else had the receiver up at the same time, or is there an extension? Yes, there's, a, there's two extensions down here. Okay, now what will be helpful to me is that uh, you both, when you do that, we have a power transmission loss. But Julie, uh, tell us your full name, where you're from, and then we'll start right that way. And I'm Julie Gold from Niles Estaca, and I'm the public relations director here. And today we have my DECA coordinator, Mr. Colson, with us. You better tell people what DECA is, uh, uh, Julie, because <clears throat> that could be a record company. No, but it, it stands for Distributed Education Clubs of America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Say that again now. Distributed Education Clubs of America. Oh, that's good. That's a nice DECA. Okay, and your guest is who again now? Mr. Colson, my DECA coordinator. Hello, DECA coordinator. Uh, hello, Cliff. How are you this morning? <laughs> Good. Uh, you know, uh, little Julie. Is, that, is it Julie, honey? Yes, it's Julie Gold. Julie, you remember?